Hey everyone. About two weeks ago now, I switched uh, full-time to using my ROG Ally and uh, my XG Mobile 6850M XT. What started out as a joyous wonder with the expectation I could go from handheld play to docked desktop mode in a flash. While in theory that may be true, in practice it never is. If you thought the ROG Ally was buggy, you haven't even graduated to the hard mode that is XG Mobile. To recap, I made my one month review of the ASUS ROG Ally about two weeks ago now. In that video I decided that I was going to use the Ally as my only computing device for the next month. This meant that I powered off my desktop and Chromebook and set them aside for what I thought was going to be an easy switch. How hard could it really be when all you're really doing is turning a handheld Windows machine into a desktop class machine? Turns out, it's pretty damn hard. You see, when I first got the XG Mobile, I was pretty excited. The thought of being able to plug in your Ally for more power, mainly docked, however it can be used in a handheld fashion, was awesome. The first initial setup seemed pretty straightforward. I plugged in the uh, Ally into the XG Mobile, uh, the Armory Crate splash screen started up, it said it was installing drivers. Once that completed, I restarted my sh machine and then when I booted it back up, it was displaying out to my monitor and everything seemed to be working as intended. However, after browsing the ROG Discord, uh, ROG Ally Discord, sorry, under the XG Mobile section, I found a treasure trove of bugs and reports of the XG Mobile just flat out not working as intended on their machines or not giving as much power. Now, I thought I was in the clear, because games seem to be performing well enough, although I've not had a mobile class GPU in ages, so I wasn't sure what to expect. It didn't blow the socks off me, but I wasn't really left wanting more per se, until I found out that after you install any driver but the ones installed by ASUS through my ASUS or on their website, uh, the XG Mobile will be limited to 100 watts all the way from 165. That is a lot of performance to be left on the table, and after confirming through RTSS, I was indeed limited to 100 watts. Through my reading of all the messages and suggestions from the helpful folks on the ROG Ally Discord, namely in the XG Mobile thread, I found out and misinterpreted incorrectly that it needed to install a specific driver. I took that to mean you needed to install the ASUS specific driver for the XG Mobile. Now after installing that driver, which hasn't been updated in almost a year, things seemed to work correctly. I was able to play Call of Duty at 4K with FSR set to balance and achieve anywhere between 100 to uh, 80 FPS. When monitoring my stats, it did report that I was getting the full 165 watts, and it did turn out that for my performance, it did turn out to be a lot when you're limited to 100. Uh, before, I was barely able to maintain 60 FPS in Call of Duty at 4K at the same settings. Um, over time, though, I realized that due to this out-of-date drivers that I was running, basically, certain games would just not launch for me, and usually they would show an unknown GPU in the game settings. So after using DDU to uninstall the GPU drivers and reinstall the correct drivers, things did work as intended. Now you think this would be the end of it, however it was only just the beginning. You see, my system has a ha nasty habit of auto-installing the AMD software from the Windows Store. In my testing, it didn't appear as though when the software was installed, it broke the XG Mobile immediately. However, it would happen over the course of my usage, maybe a day or two later after the software was installed. I would then be limited to 100 watts again, thus causing me to DDU my system and hope I removed every last bit of AMD software and driver software and then try, try again. As of writing this, the system is going two days strong of not needing to DDU or uninstall, reinstall, whatever drivers. However, I don't expect that to last given the history. The machine, however, still does its little kind of song and dance with me before allowing me the pleasure of using my device. Now what I mean is nearly every time I go to power on the Ally and connect the XG Mobile, whether the GPU was connected or not prior to it turning on, it will log in and then immediately disconnect the XG Mobile, not randomly, this is the Armory Crate software doing this. It will perform the actual deactivation process for no reason. Then begins the nightmare of trying to connect it again. Once in a blue moon, you get lucky and it works as intended. 
Other times you're left with it just on sitting on the connecting screen and then working for a minute or so and then just disconnecting on you again. This will continue on for a good 10 to 15 minutes, then just as you're about to give up hope and are on the edge of forgetting what you even sat down to do on the ally, it gives you the mercy that you so desperately want and it works. After whatever, God knows what combination of things you happen to perform finally allows you to use your product, your very expensive product. I asked everyone in the ROG Ally Discord in the XG Mobile section what their pain points were and most of them, no matter which GPU they had, echoed what I have said so far. Other common pain points brought up were Armory Crate telling you that the XG Mobile is improperly connected, even though it is connected. Sometimes after unplugging it and plugging it back in, it will work. Uh, other times I can bypass it when I get this message sometimes and I'm able to get it to work that way. But most times you have to restart the system, which is something you'll find yourself doing often with this. Another is the eGPU button that will pop up in Armory Crate uh, when you plug it in will disappear, meaning you cannot disconnect or connect, uh, activate the GPU. If you unplug the XG and power off the device, you'll get a warning from the BIOS saying that the mobile GPU is plugged in and it recommends you plug it in before proceeding. Now you can bypass this, which I found oftentimes bypassing it and not plugging it in will lead to a successful connection when you log in. Um, however, Armory Crate will also often crash itself once connected, meaning you have to do it again, unplug it improperly, and then it gets stuck in a loop of activating and reactivating on its own, requiring another reboot. As well, it will sometimes mess with your control inputs upon deactivation, leading you to even more device downtime. The amount of time that I have wasted troubleshooting this, I could have taken after Asus's motto and went after and searched for something incredible for them, because this is anything but. It is absolutely ridiculous that people spend this much money on these devices for them not to work properly. These problems are not specific to the Ally either. It can and has happened on the Flow lineup of ROG laptops. The same 100 watt bug that plagues the Ally now, it happened a few months ago with their laptops. This leads to all sorts of bug fixing, reddit thread, discord hunting type of work. Luckily, again, if you haven't found the ROG Ally discord group, help can be found there. It was due to the helpful people over there that I was able to get my 6850M mostly in working order. Another popular suggestion when using these devices or an ROG product in general is to install G Helper, and specifically for the Ally handheld companion. Now, G Helper acts as an armory crate replacement, and there is a fix for the GPU switching problems wherein you install GPU or uninstall sorry GPU switch, which is a part of the armory crate software, then install GPU helper, or even you can use x86 handheld tuner to activate the XG Mobile through those apps. If you want to go fully out of the ROG software system, you can disable it or uninstall it all, then install G Helper and Handheld Companion together to get most of, if not more, functionality of your device. One quality of life feature that you can do on the ROG Flow laptops, but not on the Ally for some reason, is being able to disable the red lights on the XG Mobile fan and the connector light. Why you can't do this specifically on the Ally is beyond me. Leave it to the community to fix things for everyone, because we all know how long ASUS takes to notice or care about an issue. Which given this rate, <laughs> that things are being sold out at, you would imagine that more and more noise would be generated over it. I have to assume there is a good portion of Ally owners looking for and owning an XG Mobile. You may ask yourself, why am I doing this one month challenge? Well, originally I had gone into this with the expectation that I was going to love it, sell my desktop, which has a desktop 4090, downgrade myself to the 4090XG mobile, keep the 6850M as an upstairs kind of like Switch Pro VR GPU, and then use the downstairs 4090XG as my gaming editing rig. I was actively searching up and down for the 4090XG. I live in Canada, so unfortunately they aren't sold in stores here. The only place where you can get them is from Memory Express on a special order. 
Same as a few other random sites, but from what I've heard uh, or read though, uh, mostly they just usually end up canceling your order. As well, they come with a no return policy. Now, taking the search to eBay fared not much better, actually worse. There are none. In my two weeks of searching with active alerts on, I got zero results. The only time I saw one out in the wild was in my local Facebook marketplace. It was listed as used, however they got it from Amazon as an open box. They were planning on returning it, but they had posted it online to see if anybody locally wanted it as if they were rare. They were selling it for the same price that they paid for it, which was basically the price of the 4090 with no tax. Um, however, that appeared just as my rose tinted glasses were beginning to fade. You see, on top of all this, the XG Mobile itself is listed as having a PCI 3.0 at uh, 8 lane speeds, which is great for the 6850M as well as the 38 model, or 3080, sorry, but not so much with the 4090, as this could potentially bottleneck the 4090. However, on top of all of that, the Asus ROG Ally only has PCI 3.0 at 4 lane speeds which means you go from about 15.7 gigabytes per second down to 7.8 gigabytes per second on the Ally. Going into this, I knew nothing about this, nor did anyone else really, I don't think. At least at the build up to launch, all the marketing material on the XG mobiles only ever said PCI 3x8. As such, one would be led to assume that as the Flow lineup had the same port, it would just carry over to the Ally. Sadly, this is not the case. I hate to say all this, I wish I could sing its praises, however I just can't. It's not an easy recommendation that the ally is, bugs and all. I hate to say it because when it works, it works great. I was able to play Resident Evil 4 Remake with RT on high settings at 4K FSR performance and get a stable 50 to 60 FPS. This was an unrealistic task for this class of GPU, however it put up an admirable fight. Now, going over to Exoprimal, a recent release, I was able to get about 40 to 60 FPS at 4K FSR balanced, uh, medium settings. Going down to performance in FSR netted no difference oh, other than the worse image quality. Um, this would be a game that you should take down to 1440p or even 1080p, depending on your setup. Call of Duty though handled like a dream, so much so that I actually lost a lot of editing and filming time since having this uh, as whenever I needed to test something I would just load up that benchmark and then when things were finally working correctly I would just have to play one match and another and another and another. Uh, the settings used on that were Ultra 4K FSR 2 Balance and this got me a great 60 to 90 FPS give or take. And when it works, nothing can stop it. Except the bugs. As you'll truly never know when you'll get hit by one, there's been many times where I was playing a game with my brother or editing a video that the display would just randomly disconnect. Maybe I would get lucky, but most oftentimes I wouldn't and it would stay displayed on the ally. This halted almost all work or play and launched me into troubleshooting mode, which I guess is a game in itself. The worst offender and ultimately the reason I cannot use the XG Mobile and the Ally full time is the amount of RAM. When using the XG Mobile you need to set the VRAM allocation to auto. That way you can utilize all 16GB of memory as system memory while allowing the eGPU to handle itself. However, I found that in my situation which may be unique when doing RAM heavy tasks such as using OBS and editing a video. Some sort of memory leak will happen and my system will just halt to a crawl. Uh, it'll remain that way until I close the offending app, which sometimes can even be Chrome with just three or four tabs open. Or if I restart the system, things will appear to run as normal. Again, this may be limited to my use case uh, because I'm using the Ally to edit videos and so on, but it should still be addressed especially with more and more games taking up RAM and uh, more VRAM on top of that. As such, that was the final nail in the proverbial coffin for the XG Mobile life in me. Don't get me wrong, I love this device and what it can offer. However, I just cannot rely on a device uh, that even when working will cause slowdowns in my workflow. Just for fun, I was on the market for a laptop and I bought and test drove the ROG Flow X16 2023 model, which is a beautiful machine. 
I was fully expecting to use that machine as my main unit, and then dock it with the XG when needed and edit from there. I even produced one video using it, and it was amazing to work with to be honest. I got 64GB of RAM to try it out, as my desktop only has 32GB, and editing was happening so much faster. Scrubbing through the timelines didn't cause any bits of choppiness, and it was like a dream. However, I ultimately returned that laptop as I simply could not rely to do my work with a buggy or inconsistent software and infrequent, sometimes hardware breaking updates. If that sounds like a slice of apple pie to you, then by all means, grab an XG Mobile. For myself, however, I wanted to love it. I truly did. Some parts of me still do. And again, when it works, it is amazing. The amount of additional performance that can be added onto the ROG Ally is jaw-dropping at times. That's without even having the 4090 model to play with. Unfortunately, due to the proprietary port and its lesser version of it on the Ally, I can only assume this generation of GPU and according uh, PCIe tech will be ditched for a faster standard in the next gen of XG mobiles, therefore negating any sort of future-proofing ideas you may have had otherwise. Um, if we stick to the trend of them releasing a one year alternating between AMD and NVIDIA, perhaps next year we may see a 7900 XT mobile variant, which could make for an interesting fight between the 4090 model. At this point though, I have backed the GPD WinMax 2 2023 model. I opted for 64 gigabytes of memory, um, as I intend to use this as like my desktop 4090 via Oculink which will give much better performance than the 4090 XG. As well, the 64 gigabytes of RAM will be enough for work, so there's no worries of it running low there. On top of all that, the WinMax 2 has a camera, which I did have to cheat in the past two weeks and use my laptop because I had no camera to use on my Ally. Not that I'm saying it needs one, but it's just another thing to be aware of. Now, Backing a GPD device appears to come with its own set of issues, with shoddy QC and reports of them loading malware on devices and their brand reps just straight up laughing about it on Reddit. GPD doesn't sit well with me. However, they are the only one right now that makes a device such as this, with the features that I want and need. The only thing that I will miss is the VRR display on the Ally. But don't worry, I'm not getting rid of the Ally. It still is and likely will remain my main gaming device, at least handheld speaking. However, I figured in the need of a new laptop, I could at least go for something a little outside the norm and add another device to my slowly growing handheld collection, as I do have aspirations of spreading just beyond what I am doing now. Where does that leave me in the XG Mobile right now? Well, as soon as I'm finished uploading this video, I'll begin the process of disabling Armory Crate, installing G Helper, handheld companion, and then hopefully working with those, being able to get a much better experience out of this device uh, than apparently what ASUS is going to provide. So that will be the plan for the next uh, kind of end of month review, I guess, of the whole XG living with lifestyle. Um, but before we finish up, I'd just like to say that a huge shout out again to my channel members. And again, I always ask that you don't subscribe to it. However, it's never unappreciated if you do choose to give me money obviously <laughs> um but anyways thank you for everyone taking the time to watch this video uh if you have an xg mobile let us know in the comments if it's been treating you well or not so well is it echoing kind of what i've been saying here uh, are you in the market for one or is this peek behind the curtain potentially dissuaded you from purchasing one as always i hope you all have a great day